Hello, storytellers. It's Storytelling Ron. So, Christian men who play RPGs, it's time. It's time to be a Christian in your games. It's time to show other players or GM or, or gather Christian men around and start playing an RPG, but using evangelism and, and being a, an actual Christian in the game. Because we are all playing pagans and we are being lulled and uh, we are being told that, you know, we accept you as long as you don't bring in your religion or politics. But the religion, religion they're talking about is Christianity because everything in the game is pagan. Pagan is about making up gods and doing things for those gods, giving sacrifices, offering sacrifices, doing good deeds for those gods and doing that over and over and over. And we don't need to bring in Jesus or anything, but what God would you like to worship as your character? Just, you know, just a fantasy thing. That's hogwash. You got to get over that. You got to clear your mind and have an, you can have an incredibly fun time. If you please watch the videos on my channel, what we're playing, we're having a blast playing an RPG, playing as Christians, evangelizing the game. And we're going to keep going in the sense of, um, you all need to spread the news that the good news that we can play as Christians in our game. And if people are offended by that, good, good. That's what Jesus said to do. Um, uh, Jesus hung out with the sinners when he started his ministry after he, I mean, before he started his ministry, after he started his ministry, he rebuked the sinner. He corrected the sinner and he was obviously attacked and chased by the sinners and the mobs and then cru eventually crucified by the sinners. So it's time, it's time to start your ministry and get and rebuke the sinners and get chased out of the conventions and games and, um, lose your players. It's time. Um, look at the world. And I'm going to explain the world right now. This is, and this is for creating RPG adventures. Now I'm, this is what I'm saying is tough and extreme. I don't want you to feel a burden like that. Uh, take your time, pray on it, think about it, but start asking around, start asking other Christian men, start working on it slowly. It took me two years, you know, to do all this. And, 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 and when I separate myself from the, um, play people who did not want to play Christians, or be a Christian. It, it was cordial. It wasn't, I wasn't mean or anything. It was just more of a, you know, a nice thing. I mean, I was just like, you know, love you guys, but, uh, I'm going to be doing a Christian role playing game now. And so we separated parted ways and you know, it was okay. Um, so it's time, time for you to do it too. Take your, I mean, take your time, figure it out. You can pick this game or homebrew, whatever, but you need to start playing as Christians in the game. You evangelize, rebuke, you plan a church, you set up a church, build a church, move on to the next adventure. I don't mind if you do like fantastical or extreme science, you know, extreme gonzo. I don't mind to be honest. I mean, you know, you, you, you figure that out with your play, with your Christian friends. Um, you figure out that level of, from like, say of a, grounded in reality to gonzo fantasy or, or sci-fi. It's fine by me. Um, but in it is evangelism, planning churches. Cause that's what the new Testament is all about. That's how we should be acting. We built churches in a society to create a civilization, just like the white col colonists did back in the day. And I'm using white colonists because that's what they're using to degrade us, to, to embarrass us, to shame us. While all the while destroying nations, turning them into pagan barbarianism, barbaric paganism. And, speak, and you can see it. They're sexualizing our children. They're brutally certain and they're, they're killing our children in sacrifices and baby sacrifices. And the ones that survive, they're now trying to sexualize or, or sexualize in it, and they're grooming them. So it's time. It's time to wake up and rebuild the church. The church has gotten weak. It's gotten emptied because we are lulled. We are thinking we're Christian by just being nice. That's not a Christian. You're not a Christian just by being nice and wanting and looking for opportunities to talk to them. That's not a Christian. You're a Christian all the time and you need to rebuke sin and you need to gather amongst other Christian men, uh, and form churches, get a pastor, <laughs> make sure the pastor is good and be critical of the pastor, be an elder in that church, um, and keep going and 
create your sons to be men of virtue and that they go out and rebuke. Okay. Um, it's time. So here's some ideas for some adventures to create in your game because we need to have fun. We need to, uh, we need to role play. We need to practice in order for me to get good at this stuff, which I'm not that good at it, but in uh, sword fighting, I have to sit there and hit the hit uphill boringly for two years, you know, and now I can do it very naturally, but it's, I have to do it over and over and over. Same with evangelism, same with our faith. We have to be in it over and over and over. Um, obviously there's other, you can do Bible study, you can do whatever you want. But some of us love RPGs and are, I've grown up with RPGs and so we know it. And I don't have to give up a thing. I mean, I give up uh, fantasy or, you know, the Star Wars, Marvel, even Lord of the Rings. I, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to give them up necessarily, but I'm going to, they're not going to be part of my important aspect of say role-playing. Um, f- light entertainment, fine. Role-playing though, you're, you're engaged in role-playing. You're really engaged. So you need to um, really, you're working on your, you know, you're kind of firing all cylinders when you're, when we're RPGing. So when I'm watching a movie, I, I'm just kind of, I'm not going to watch like a ton of Christian movies. I mean, only Christian movies, right? I'm going to watch whatever. Cause I'm not really, I'm just wanting to, to zone out and I'll even watch bad stuff too. You know, just cause I'm got to watch something. I'm just zoning out. Um, but in, but I don't want to watch, I don't want to, uh, funny enough, I don't want to read that kind of stuff. I don't mind watching it because I'm just trying to zone out and, you know, just tired. I need, I need to rest. God says we need to rest. Um, but when I read, I tend, I definitely want to read something that's Christian because I guess my, my brain is, you know, kind of working at that point. And then when I'm are doing RBGs, I really want it to be Christian because I want to, I want you and me to know we can do this. We can, we can uh, have a whole heck of a lot of fun in RPG. Okay. So let me give you some ideas for for the Lord RPG, these these are my three game settings: Dark Ages, which is sixth century. Uh, you know, right when the church is starting up and encountering the violence of the barbaric Vandals and Visigoths and all that no, northern Rome. That's kind of the setting I have. Uh, another player who who who's trying to start do one uh, sixth century ish uh, in in Ireland. That's kind of cool. We just had a little fun one on one one off that he did uh, one shot. I do an Apostle of Apoc, which is like twenty two hundred A D. Um, you know, nuclear waste, the atheist one world government, uh, left the earth and nuked it. And so the survivors were the Christians in the prison camp. And then they, they are now going out into the wastelands, gonzo, silly gonzo fun wastelands and, uh, you know, mutants and all kinds of mutant creatures and gonzo, uh, like that movie love and monsters is a good example. So I uh, like that movie. It's, it's fun, but apostles, of the epoch and then Christians in space, which is my take on star Wars, star Trek. Yes, maybe Battlestar Galactic, all that. I, I can steal from all of it because they are stealing from us. So, and remember fantasy, fantasy comes from the struggle between Christians and paganism. That's what fantasy is. And, uh, throughout the medieval history. And so what have we done now with RPGs and what have pagans done? They've, they've removed the Christian Christian part of it. And they, and then they are taking credit now for chivalry, romance, um, which is Christian. Uh, uh, well, those are the two main ones, but also, but, but civilization, they're taking credit for all that now. And, um, that's, and I've always given them credit because, well, I was never really a Christian until 15 years ago, but I, I, I always just, just, just yeah, yeah, I, we, we could, we don't have to do our religion or politics. We just, just play the game, just have fun, just relax, have fun. But we're just, uh, we're being lied to, and I'm trying to wake you guys up. Um, to this situation. I should stop rubbing my face because I just, I'm just kind of blabbing here. Okay. So let me go on to the, um, uh, some stories here that, that today's stories, today's news, which will just give you, you can find ideas for adventures in today's news. So this is a wonderful story about El Salvador. The president is gives gives the glory to God. He had a huge victory, like 80% or whatever. Christ is King. Um, he's young. He's like 40 something. And uh, this is an amazing little article um, on not to be. I, you know, I start with not to be in the mornings. So let me go with the, he. He did a here. This is, this is the soldiers, the military. You know, like like I guess a Christian nationalist police state. Um, he 
And he, and he got voted in 80 plus percent. That's an incredible amount. The, the next one was a communist, like got 7% or 10%. So he did this amazing speech and I'm just going to um, read a bit of it here. Colin, Colin Rug, I can't, you know, I can't see it there, but Colin Rug, this guy posted it. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to go through a bit here. We, we have been in this war against gangs for eight months. Thank God we are already winning. This is a surprising, very surprising victory that is close enough to make it clear that the glory of, is for God and what belongs to God. So he's telling us to the soldiers uh, and police of uh, that, that big, that picture of all those dudes uh, and women. We are being, we human beings have the joy of being instruments of God, all of us to bring peace, freedom, and happiness to the Salvadorian people. And we are the instrument to heal this earth. Each of you are an instrument of God to do so. Peace is not achieved by signing agreements between corrupt people, sharing power among murderers. Peace is built with work, sweat, effort, and the courage that you and your brothers in the police have. You must have something to be able to, I just keep reading this. You must have something to be able to know that you are part of something greater than yourself. And that it's worth take, risking your life for the per, that purpose. That is more important than yourself alone. Pagans believe in themselves. They believe in sacrificing to their gods to gain something for themselves. That's what pagan is all about. Making up your own crappy religion with your false gods, your ancestors, whatever, to get power for yourself. Remember, pagans define leadership as power. Christians define leadership as service. So in a pagan culture, which we are starting to have in America, because us Christian men are all being lulled in our role-playing games, and in the culture we are being lulled, we are more into Star Wars fandom, Marvel fandom, comic book DC fandom than we are in and than we are into Jesus Christ or our the or the church history or what it takes to make a civilization. It takes churches everywhere. If you want to go on vacation, the rich celebrities, they want to go on vacation to Europe. I mean, a couple of hippies go to Bali or Bali or whatever, but they really want to go to Europe. Why? Because of the foundational church structure cr across Europe. We defeated the Vikings. We defeated the pagans, uh, whoever, whatever other pagans. <laughs> itch in my face. Um, Because. They go to the cathedrals, right? All these rich, li white, libtard celebrities go to cathedrals to see the beauty of it. But just just no re no religion. Well, no Christianity. No Jesus Christ. But let's go to the cathedrals and, and take pictures and, and see the wonders of these things that people built. But but we just don't do any religion. Just take that out. Um, you will see... I'm reading again here. You will see how the most important values that human beings have, honor, loyalty, bravery, courage, love for others, are precisely the values that we are losing each day. And that is why you see societies that seem to have already achieved it are now degrading America because they are losing the values that made them great. These values were probably, probably not strong in this land, but were strong in other lands. That is why those lands grew and became great, but they are losing those values now. On the contrary, in El Salvador, the values that were previously degraded in our country are now the most important. Just take a look at yourselves, young men and women who have all these values. How will a nation rise up with values like this? How could a nation not rise up that puts God first and then puts the hard work and effort with these kind of values? So he's talking to the soldiers, these young men and women who are cleaning house in El Salvador and getting rid of these criminal gangs that have been ruling, ruling, ruling the day that rue the day that the gangs ruled um, El Salvador. And, and remember, we all knew about this El Salvador gangs. There was a civil war. So, my daughter's suitor is half Mexican, and um, and I and I brought it. I actually talked to him a couple days ago about this. You know, we there's there's this okay there's this always this ongoing joke about Mexico and how bad it is, right? Pathetic Mexico is or Mexicans or whatever, um, um, sort of sort of a demeaning thing, kind of like Polish and Polacks, which I'm half Polak, half Polish. But anyway, the think about this, um, Mexico. We always think of Mexico as Catholic. It's not. Mexico has been atheist forever. Like it's always been, they've had like, I believe two, and I, I saw this on some videos. I don't really know that much of Mexican history, but I saw watching, I remember watching a YouTube video about this, about the history of Mexico. 
And the guy was explaining how the Mexican government had, was always, had turned atheist like twice, like Marxist, communist, atheist, and had wiped out the Catholic church, like in the Civil War back in whatever, and then in the 1930s, and, and basically wiped out the Catholic church. And each time, you know, the Catholic church had to re, 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 is re, 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 like in recovery mode. So the Mexican country is, state has never really been Catholic. It's been, it had it early on, but then it got wiped out by the atheists, to, you know, and, and, and so the culture is more secular. It's pagan and it's very pagan, right? Because there's the Santeria, all that whole, the whole death thing, the whole Cinco de Mayo death cult and, you know, uh, paganizing Catholic images and, and, and worshiping a, San, the dead. That's pagan. Uh, watch that movie Coco or whatever, the, the Pixar movie. The Mexican culture is pagan and atheist. That is why they're such a crappy nation and why they're having all these problems and having, you know, people come through. Uh, so El Salvador was always a pretty messed up state. And now look at it. It's, it's, they're voting this guy in and check this out. Mega prison in El Salvador for 40,000 suspected gangsters, which only has only 80 beds for every 100 inmates. So look at this. They're no more messing around. They freaking are arresting these guys. Look at that. They're treating them like crap and they deserve to be. And look at all these dudes. They all have, um, this is paganism right here these tattoos and all the symbolism and they, you know, they mix in, um, 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 Christian with Santeria and all kinds of creepy stuff, man. They're all into their imagery, right. And tattooing. So this is the kind of thing that you can have in, um, in your RPG, your Christian RPG, where they come into a society where it is this type of people that run it. And there is no hope for the people. The right gangs are running the streets in whatever area you come into. There's gangs, bandits, whatever, fighting each other, fight, killing each other. And remember, paganism is all about revenge, right? All the Hollywood movies about assassins is revenge, selling us on revenge. John Wick sells us on killing. Killing is the is the the solution in paganism. Vengeance and killing is the solution. Um, and that was really clarified under uh, the end of tip of the spear, end of the spear, the, the, the movie documentary about the evangelists who go to South America and the company called iTech USA, iTech, I T E C USA actually still running today based off of the success of this, the evangelism of the, of the natives, the indigenous people in South and Ecuador. I can't remember, but the, the grandfather said that if, if they hadn't, if the Christians had not come and, and converted his tribe, they would have all died because of vengeance with other tribes. Like they had a, they had a history, a lineage and a, and a, and a worship of vengeance against each other. And they would have eradicated each other. Um, anyway, so the president, and there he is right there touring this new facility where they are done with the gangs. Look at that. Look at this. These guys were on the streets of El Salvador. Think of here in America that, that this is happening now. These, these, these people, the, the Democrats are, here in America are allowing these people to have their you know, rights, the illegals, the legals, whoever, they're not Christian. They're, they're not, they're running gangs and they're running criminal organizations. And imagine in my neighborhood or your neighborhood, only, it only takes about 10 of these guys that are crazy to run everything and, and shut you out. Especially if there's no police, there's no church, there's no security. They will rule your, you and me and everyone. Doesn't matter how many swords I got or guns I got. Doesn't matter. They will put fear into me. They they won't even come after me. They'll come after my family. Right? Why not? That's that. Why not? That's what they do. I mean, so a society, you know, and the the, the this guy in this speech said no more because he's a Christian. He believes in something beyond what atheists and pagans believe. Atheists and pagans worship power. So if they're, if, if, if someone is more powerful than them, they will give into it. They will surrender. They've only got, you only got one life. They've only got one life to live. They will sacrifice to whoever. And if that doesn't work, whoever's more powerful comes in, they will, they will worship them. Pagans worship something. They, they worship power. Whoever's the most powerful, they will worship. And they, it doesn't matter if they're murdering or killing. See us Christians, we don't worship power. We worship serve to serve and to love. Uh, and if we saw someone killing people, we would not worship them. We would try to stop them. And it's called war. We are, we Christians are warmongers. We will go to war. We will not do terrorism like pagans do. We will not do genocide like pagans do. We will not do slavery like pagans do. We will go to war. 
and slavery you know i'm i will defend that christianity up up down and right and left versus uh what what the white colonizer slavers did for less than 300 years whereas what pagans did for 3,000 years or shoot 5,000 years uh so last little oh i'm gonna keep going on here just because so, and i was thinking about the singapore singapore is a country where they have a really good um um laws and they're like really strict and i was wondering about that so i was wondering what kind of a they're buddhist part buddhist part so they're very a very mix of religions and buddhism being the biggest um and then christianity and then islam and but the thing about singapore you know they say that it's really full of laws and it's not christian well they were under british rule for 100 years so white colonies and then of course it was the pagan japanese who came in in 1945 and messed up all the white colonies in, the, in asia because of the war and and, and weakened and you know the, and and the pagans of of japan and the pagans of not uh germany national socialist pagans they were not christian uh pretty much weakened the white co- colonies so that after the war after the war um post-war period there was a whole <laughs> state of you know before before when the white colonists were there everyone was having like a wonderful economy it was going well the british colonial thing was happening hong kong was thriving um uh, singapore was thriving and then of course after the war the, the white colonists and the christians and they're christians by the way uh had to leave because we were just so beat up the christians were that they had to re- return back to england and, and all the other we were, you know rebuild europe basically um that uh it be, uh, after that it became horrible they became like uh, looting, revenge killing were widespread. Okay. And this is in Wikipedia. They're admitting it fell into a brief state of violence, disorder, looting. Okay. And then, then the British had to return just to try to, you know, help them. So that's okay. Last thing here. Look at this. Uh, another satanic display at Grammy awards singer performs satanic ritual with demons sucking blood and blood leaking from walls. I mean, you know, a uh, little Nas, little, little Nas, whatever did one in 2022 and 23 Sam Smith did the whole satanic thing. And now I feel like this, she's like a young girl. I feel like, I feel like, uh, someone just fooled her, like her handlers groupies. Probably, oh, this is going to be so cool. It's going to be so, you know, I think there, there's that constant, ridiculousness when you are famous and you're young you get surrounded by handlers and the handlers all tell you what to do and it's becoming it's satanic and and so in our grammys okay and it's just singing it's just singing but why do they have to have satan then why do they have to have satanic crap and blood and stuff um it's time christian man it's time uh yeah this is just more of that thing but it, it it's it's just pathetic and it's time for you and me to be christian all the time find a way and in rpgs find a way it's such a joy i'm telling you it's such a joy watch my playthroughs i don't edit them i want i want to i want you guys to just see someone playing and us playing and having to deal with the humdrum but also the fun we have fun moments we have exciting moments we have it's all role playing there's no editing to try to make it look like it's something it really isn't rpgs have a lot of ups and downs in there and when you play um I have no insecurity about, you know, my skill as a, as a game master. And, uh, and I just love what I do. Going to put it all out there. And we don't need those D and D's and all these stuff. I mean, they're fun. Look, I don't hate them. And I wish, I wish we, we could like play them. Right. And, and I may, I don't know. I may, I may play them again. I don't know. But the culture is so bad. Um, the church is so weak. You need to, you need to take my game and go to your church, uh, you know, and set up a little game thing. I don't know. Do something like that. Whatever you can do to get Christians now to realize we need to start being Christian in, in the culture. We need to rebuke sin out, out openly. They're, they're doing satanic stuff out openly. They're doing LGBTQT stuff out openly, which is incredible sins. You and, and they're even going into our churches. They're going, the progressives are taking over the churches. And what are you doing? You would, you want to get along? Let's go get along, go along. Let's be nice. I'm going to look for an opportunity to talk to them. No, rebuke them. Rebuke it openly. Like I am. I'm doing a terrible job of it, but I'm doing it nonetheless. So you need to do it somehow. Figure it out bit by bit. Pray on it. Play this game. Get my game. I'm do- I got a gig started right now. Go get the fun Christians of space one. I'm going to, uh, I'm finishing it up. I'm going through drive-through. Uh, I hope that's okay with them. I hope they let me do it there. Um, 
if I, you know, if I do it somewhere else, I will, but right now I'm going to send it up there. I hope. Uh, and if, if that doesn't work, I'll, I'll go somewhere else. It's fine. I'll figure it out for you. I'm available. All right. So that's my little, uh, RPG adventures, uh, ideas. Oh, so just to get back to the, the gangs all support, you know, running an area, this is historically accurate. I read about a barbarian who's this is in the, in, before church, before the Christianity, it was somewhere in that period or, uh, around, uh, third, second, third AD, whatever. Um, but he, it, there was an account of a barbarian who got, who saw all the crime going on in the villages, how they were always getting ransacked and, and, the, and the villages were starving and suffering and, and everyone was doing it because there was nothing, there was no religion. There was no, I mean, there was no church, all paganism. So why not just keep conquering each other? And he saw the, and this was a period, especially around the fifth, sixth century where there's a lot of plagues and stuff. So the, the populations were very scattered and, and, and remote. Thusly, you know, it was very easy for bandits to go around stealing and not be attacked or whatever. Um, but he saw it. It was so commonplace. He decided to try to be a hero and, and stop it by fighting them and, and, and defending the villages and stuff. Of course, he ended up getting killed himself because he was kind of alone in trying to do that and helping the villagers. Uh, he eventually got killed. He, I think he had a small group, but not. he was outnumbered by the bad guys, by the ones that said, we're going to keep doing this. So how do you then defend against that? You you plant churches. You, you, you change the hearts and minds of the people so that they can slowly build their own courage amongst their people. You have to have men of courage, men of virtue. You have to build that up. And the way you build that up is in a church because you're not going to build it up in a paganism. You're not going to build it up in a government school. You're not going to build up men of virtue at a government school. Are you? Go to public school. Are they building men of virtue? No, they're building slaves there. They educate, that's what they're doing. With at a church, you must build up men of virtue. And I'm going to crit- and not to say that all churches are perfect either, right? They're pretty bad, you know, in today's world. They're, they're becoming more and more progressive and weak. So you got to go back to church. You got to rebuild the church to what it, what the Bible says. And, um, and let's do it in the RPG culture too. We need to, we need to work on it and we need to reveal, we need to, we need to identify and reveal evil much more clear than what they're, they're, they're homogenizing evil in these. They're making them so toyish and ridiculous. Oh, we just want to keep it light and fun as long as you act pagan. But I want, and I don't want to, when I make villains too, I don't want it to be, I don't want to really reveal what they do. Child sacrifices and sexualizing children and child sacrifices and sexualizing children and killing and oppressing people, murdering, sacrificing humans. I, I, I don't want to keep doing that, but it, they do, they do do it like tomb of annihilation. They'll definitely, you know, a couple sentences describes it. That's what they do. Um, so we do do it, but do it in a manner that's kind of somewhat acceptable in PG 13. But anyway, I hope that gave you some ideas and my little rant here. I kind of mixing rant with RPG adventures, but, um, that's my news, news that I'm looking at and how to make some RPG adventures and, and be a Christian man. Um, it's time. Okay, guys. Um, so, In the game of life, we all need to start rolling holy dice.